You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Thursday, December 14th. Teresa Bakovinak, a pro-life Democrat and former leader of the progressive anti-abortion uprising, has launched a provocative TV ad campaign in New Hampshire challenging the Democratic Party's stance on abortion. Airing on the local NBC affiliate during The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, the 30-second ad features Bakovinak, who describes herself as a secular progressive activist, includes graphic images of five late-term aborted babies from a Washington, D.C. clinic aiming to highlight the issue's brutality. Bukovinak criticizes President Joe Biden and the Democratic Party for supporting what she terms a genocide, positioning herself as a pro-life presidential candidate. The campaign seeks to shake the conscience of Americans, especially left-leaning voters, ahead of the New Hampshire Democratic presidential primary on January 23rd. This non-binding primary, which won't allocate delegates, is seen as an indicator of Biden's opposition within his party. Despite Biden leading in Democratic primary polls, Bukovinak's campaign emphasizes representing pro-life Democrats and reigniting the abortion debate within the party. Following the Hamas attacks in Israel, the Christian nonprofit organization CityServe is actively supporting the Israeli community of Ein Habesor. This agricultural region, crucial for over 60% of Israel's produce, faced a devastating attack on October 7th, resulting in the displacement of 320 families. CityServe, led by Vice President of Government Relations Todd Lamphere, has been instrumental in aiding these families, raising around $250,000 for their immediate needs. This assistance includes paying for hotel expenses and providing additional laundry facilities. Lamphere's visit to Israel, arranged by CityServe's Israel director Uri Steinberg, underscores the organization's commitment to standing with Israel as part of their mission for community transformation. Despite being poorly armed, the residents of Ein Habesor, including Dr. Yiftak Gepner, courageously defended their community. CityServe's long-term plan includes securing the area around Ein Habesor as they continue to provide support in the wake of the attacks. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear a significant legal challenge concerning the Food and Drug Administration's revised guidelines on the distribution of the abortion pill, Mifeprestin. This decision, revealed in a miscellaneous orders list, will review cases involving the FDA and Alliance Hippocratic Medicine, among others. The Biden administration successfully appealed lower court decisions against its easing of Mifeprestin distribution rules, but the Supreme Court declined to consider the legality of the FDA's original 2000 approval of the drug. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre expressed support for the FDA's stance, emphasizing the administration's commitment to defend access to reproductive care. If a Preston used in about half of all U.S. pregnancy terminations, faced scrutiny from pro-life groups and U.S. Judge Matthew Kaczmarek, who criticized the FDA's relaxation of safety measures and accused it of succumbing to political pressure. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals partially upheld Kaczmarek's ruling, but allowed Mifa Preston to remain available during legal proceedings. Supreme Court Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito expressed reservations about the stay granted by the Supreme Court, with Alito questioning the alleged harm and regulatory conflict involved. Harvard University President Claudine Gay faces allegations of plagiarism. The New York Post reports that Gay allegedly plagiarized or improperly cited work in 27 instances, including academic papers and a magazine article. Harvard's response involving hiring attorney Thomas Clare to defend against these claims. Notably, Jonathan Bailey from Plagiarism Now suggests Gay may have violated Harvard's citation policies. Despite this, the Harvard Corporation supports Gay, stating she did not breach research misconduct standards. They emphasize their confidence in her leadership, especially in addressing societal issues and fighting against anti-Semitism. This controversy coincides with Harvard's handling of anti-Semitism on campus, highlighted by Gay's recent congressional testimony. She apologized for her response to queries about the university's stance on calls for genocide against Jews. Amidst the turmoil, Harvard continues its commitment to academic freedom and open discourse, with the Harvard Corporation reiterating their support for Gay. In a compelling post-game press conference on December 10th, Baltimore Ravens head coach John Harbaugh, after their 37-31 overtime victory against the Los Angeles Rams, intertwined his reflections on football with his Christian faith. Harbaugh, a veteran coach with a Super Bowl win under his belt, emphasized the significance of the Advent season, likening it to the anticipation and preparation inherent in December football. He stated, quote, Advent comes from the Latin Adventus, which means anticipation and preparation for an amazing event, which is the coming of our Savior and celebrating the Christ. 
the good news that changes the world and changes it for all eternity. The game, a tense battle that concluded with a decisive 76-yard punt return, was also a moment for Harbaugh to share his personal journey and beliefs. Raised in a Catholic home, Harbaugh has grown in his faith, regularly attending Mass and engaging with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. On the Sports Spectrum podcast, he expressed that, quote, success is alignment with God, and described how his commitment to Christianity deepened in college, driven by the historicity of Christ's resurrection. Harbaugh's approach to coaching and life appears deeply intertwined with his faith as he seeks to align with God's will and trusts in divine providence. In the upcoming animated film, Migration, directed by Benjamin Renner, audiences are in for a heartwarming and thoughtful experience. Renner, a 40-year-old director known for his dedication to family-friendly entertainment, emphasizes his aversion to lazy jokes, striving for humor that resonates with all ages. The film, set for release on December 22nd, narrates the adventurous tale of a family of mallards journeying from New England through New York City to Jamaica overcoming a myriad of challenges along the way. This journey highlights themes of family bonding, overcoming fears, and embracing life's challenges. The star-studded voice cast includes Danny DeVito, Kamal Nanjani, Keegan-Michael Key, and Aquafina. Renner's personal experiences and family dynamics notably influence the film's narrative, infusing relatable humor into the story. Migration is more than a children's movie, it's a reflection on life's complexities, aiming to inspire viewers to face life's obstacles with courage and a sense of humor. You can learn more about the movie Migration by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast in your podcast player of choice. Apple Podcasts on iPhone, Spotify on iPhone or Android, or Google Podcasts in your Android device. Don't forget you can download the Edify app by searching for Edify, E-D-I-F-I, in the iPhone or Android app stores. There you can access our entire network of faith-based and uplifting podcasts. You can also subscribe to the Christian Post daily newsletter and get the top headlines every day delivered right to your inbox. You can click the links to download the Edify app or subscribe to the newsletter in the podcast episode description. We would also appreciate a five-star rating and review in the Apple Podcasts app or in Spotify. Thank you for listening. This has been the Christian Post daily podcast.